Good morning, good morning. It's Lieta from HomeStagingStepbyStep.com and we have my guest Jenny Ullman who is in Tucson. Is that the way to pronounce it? Arizona. Yes, yeah. Hi Diana, I see you are coming on. Welcome, welcome. And uh, we'll be starting very shortly. I know there are people that are going to be joining us. As you're joining us, if you could um, give me your name in the chat box, that would be really appreciated so we know who we're talking to. And uh, if not, you can also give StreamYard the permission to um, access your Facebook a profile, and that way for all the following times it's going to work. So, um, I also wanted to ask you, if you are watching the replay, please type a replay in the comments, hashtag replay. That would be greatly appreciated so I know who is on with us. Um, so uh, we're not going to be, we're going to be starting shortly. And I want to thank Jenny for being here with us this morning. And I hope the weather is nice where you are. Nice and hot, is it? It's hot. We've had a really hot summer, but but I love it. Yeah, yeah I, lo I love heat also. I actually went for a little walk this morning. I'm in Montreal, Canada, and it's still kind of okay. I do Celsius, so hi, guys. I see people are coming on. Please give us uh, your name in the chat box so we know who you are. That would be really nice. And I know there is a delay, so sometimes I'm not able to see right away who you are. If you do have questions for uh for jenny please uh, make sure that you put them in the chat box and we'll try to get to everybody and answer all of your questions you can also answer the questions later on right i'll pass them on to you so if, in case if somebody wants of course a question okay perfect uh so uh, the, really nice. oh, this is not good <laughs> sorry that's because I went on my Facebook on my phone so I can see who's coming on. Sherry, hi Sherry. I thought you completely disappeared on me. I'm glad I'm glad you are here. Actually, Sherry is one of my students. She signed up for my academy in July. And we're still working through her. And she is actually a perfect person for you. Sherry is in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Okay. And uh, she's kind of, she didn't have very good experience previously with her uh, realtors. So I know that's the reason why she is on with us this morning. And it's also one of the reasons why I wanted to have this talk with you. Because yeah. there's a lot of people like Sherry out there who I noticed within my clients who are really uncertain and kind of overwhelmed <clears throat> by how to find the right realtor, how to find the right fit for them how to make sure that the person is going to give them the best advice for them, not to take advantage of them. Sometimes people just kind of just get lazy and they go with somebody, you know, well, oh, he's my nephew's friend or he's my cousin's husband. And I'm so totally against that. And it really, it's a big pet peeve of mine. And I think people should do their research. And it's so, so important to have a really good realtor representing to really make or break the sale, right? So we're going to talk about that. So now that everybody's on, let's do official introduction. So Jenny is a successful realtor out of Tucson, Arizona. And I'll let you talk a little bit about yourself and your background. Sure. Well, my background, I, I'm a single mom with three kids and I'm a school minister, was a school administrator. I was a teacher before that. And I just, uh, you know, moved around a lot with my ex-husband before 15 years ago, ended up in Tucson and said, nope, I'm staying here. My husband left <laughs> and, and I kind of re recreated my life because I, you know, had already uprooted many, many times. So part of uh, what got me into real estate was having made so many moves and knowing the relocations and having to move and uproot and move back and forth and it was such an important thing. And having had different experiences with good realtors and not so good realtors made a huge difference. And one of the things I know, Sveta, you talk about is how emotional uh, selling, buying or selling a home can be. It and is. I think a lot of people underestimate just how emotional that's going to be. And I think being prepared for that and having someone, um, for me, it was always important having a realtor who understood there were a lot of other emotional things going on at the time. And I needed someone who was a professional to help me get the most for my house, make sure that that transaction went smoothly so that my emotions didn't derail the process. 
Yeah, so, as a matter of fact, it's, it's a very good point that you're making because, you know, I noticed in my 15 years of home staging that I, I even taught my students that, that a lot of times, 80% of what we do is psychological. We pull people through an emotional and often difficult period of their life. Sometimes it's for a good cause, but sometimes it's not a good cause. It could be relocation, death, divorce, downsizing, whatever it is. And so the team that surrounds the homeowner at that particular period of their life, I think it's so much, they're so important. And the way I always see that it really is a team. So one of the most important members of the team is, of course, the homeowner, the home seller. And then there's the realtor who really has to be the right hand person and a perfect or a good fit for the home seller in all aspects. And we're going to talk about the aspect mm -hmm. and a home stager to, to get the house going. So my first question before we talk about, you know, the questions and how to interview potential realtors, how to find them, all that stuff. But I found you in this group. OK, this is what I do. And I, I pick people from this group because there, we have so many interesting people in this group and I want to continue that and I want people to kind of get to know each other and help each other out. So I found you, you came into this group. So my first question is, why did you look for my group? How did you find me? What was your interest? Well, my interest is I'm always looking to do the best thing for my clients. And right now it's very easy in, in our market. It is such a seller's market. Things are going on the, the market and they're selling within 24 to 48 hours with multiple offers. But we all know that this is not necessarily how the market always goes. And even if it's this hot and I can sell it, even if I were not a very good uh, realtor, I could sell it. I could sell a house. I still am looking out for my client's best interest. I want to make sure that they get the top dollar. So if I am putting on the market, I know I'm going to get an offer. I want to get the top offer. I want to make sure I'm getting it at list price. And I want to get as, ma as many offers as I can to present the best things to my clients. And staging is a really, really, really important part of that. Um, it just, it, we talk about emotions. I know that people, I, I, I've been with buyers. You walk in a house and they make a judgment within seconds of walking in the house as to whether or not they're going to take that house seriously. It is exactly. done. I, I know. I think, what, what do you say? How many seconds in? in well, your I, think it's, I mean, it varies, right? Nobody knows exactly, but sometimes I would say probably within the first 60 seconds, people have a first impression and that impression dictates the way they feel about the house. And the funny thing is that if you kind of create that wow factor, which is what I do, right? Creating the wow factor, that uh, people are more forgiving of small imperfections, yeah. right? But if you, if there, if when they come in, there's something they don't like the smell or they don't like the paint color or they don't, it's cluttered, whatever is bothering them, all of a sudden they will become more critical. Is, is yeah. that true? That abs. Absolutely. And I would say a negative effect is within, I would say, the first 10 seconds. I, I You walk in a house and you know whether that buyer is just, you, you hear it, you hear them breathe and go, oh, okay. You and won't hear that. Know that you're gonna have a it's a lot for them to look over over stuff that just immediately doesn't speak to them. And I, it it's hard to overcome. Okay, so let's get more a little bit more into so now I know that you believe in home staging, you think it's super important. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we, we are going to touch on the fact that Jenny actually purchased uh, my self based course, and the reason why she purchased it because she wanted to go through it so A, she can recommend it to her clients, and B, so she knows exactly the type of things that I recommend mm -hmm. to the clients to do so she can make certain recommendations. So we'll come back to that. But before that, let's go to like, how do you, so let's say, you know, somebody like Sherry, who is in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, she's had some bad experiences previously with her realtors. She needs to sell her house. She needs to sell it fast. She needs to sell it for, you know, top dollar. We all want that. The market right now is hot, but apparently the rumors, the rumors that the market is going to go down, you know, kind of uh, pretty, pretty soon because there's just not, not, not in inventory. Like no more people are going to be selling anyway. It, we don't know what's going to happen. Right. But if we're if we're modeling on on Sherry's needs, and she doesn't really know any realtor, she doesn't really have any friends. Where would where would she start? 
Well, the, 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 there's several different places where you can start. I, I think knowing yourself and you know your situation, but I think also knowing the, the key factors to you, which are the most important um, when you're going in to sell a house. So you being clear with yourself as to what do I, what are my, what are my points of focus that I need to make sure that I connect with my realtor on? Um, for some people, it's time. If time is of the essence, and this is, you know, I need to know how important this is. Am I selling it in three months? And, and do I need to sell it within the next 60 days? Am I living with someone I'm divorcing and I need to be out of there as soon as possible? Do we, what are the factors with time that are going on? That's one thing. Um, right. The second, the second thing I would say are costs because people need to make sure that they are on the same page with the realtor. So, um, you know, can do you have any money to um, do some things to your home to do at top dollar, or do you just need to be straight up with the realtor and say, look, I can't do that, but I still need this. You need to have the money considerations factored in as to what you need, you know, cost wise for you, but also knowing what that realtor is going to ask for from you. you and the your You're talking about the commission. Mm -hmm. You talk about commission, but also maybe any kind of costs because um some realtors for me when i list a house i pay for the i pay for the photos i pay for the matterport as the ah. realtor okay um, so you just to clarify so what you're saying is that one of the one of the questions so we're just gonna go to the question sure. but before i get there i still want to go back how do you like do you just pick a realtor out of uh yellow pages on the internet like how do where do you start who recommends like where should you start looking and how many realtors should you meet with before you make your decision and then we'll go into questions to ask sure so you you yes you can you can start a lot of people go on on the internet look for google you know look at reviews look what they are um a lot of people as you mentioned will will turn and ask friends and people who have you used that has helped you but that can be a sticky thing um because if they are recommending their nephew or somebody else who's new to the business you have to be able to again emotionally detach and not be afraid of hurting that other person's feelings if that's not the right person for yeah exactly. so for example you know one of the things is because should you like how do you find the top realtor for your area is it something you look at the signs when you walk around your neighborhood you see who's got the most listing signs out there um what, what's your recommendation? So, so what I, I actually, I, I would not, the, the number one way that I tell people is say you ask a friend who had a successful transaction with a non-family member, if that exists. If that doesn't exist, um, then then you can go to local uh, experts. I, you know, and what I, one of the things that I do for people who don't live in Tucson is I will actually interview realtors for people if I don't know someone in that area and say, so I have several friends in the Washington DC area and I've developed relationships with realtors there because I know they provide services for clients of mine who go back and forth. So you can ask a realtor you know from a different area to help you interview. Okay, so um, I wanna expand on that. So for example, specifically for Sherry, because I know she needs this, if she's in, would you would you be able, for example, to go through your network and yes. recommend one or two specific realtors in Lancaster, yes. Pennsylvania, for her? You would. Yeah. Yep. There is there a charge for this service? No. I'm asking for Sherry. No. No. There's okay. there's not there, there's not there's not a charge. So basically, so the people understand because you know you and I were kind of in. I'm also a little bit more into the real estate community, but yeah. the way it works is uh, that G Jenny will. It, there's no cost to the home seller, but basically you get a referral fee, so part of the commission from whoever from whoever realtor uh, Sherry or Olga or anybody else chooses. Is that is that correct? Correct. It, okay, that's right. It, and it's just, it's, it's partly just, you know, professional courtesy of trying to find someone who, who, you know, to make connections throughout the country, because we do pass referrals to each other all the time, because we need to make sure that I, for me, when my clients leave me and move somewhere else, I still want to make sure they're taken care of and make sure that they're getting good service on the other end. And so realtors are around the country speak with each other. Okay. And, it doesn't even have to be necessarily from the same agency, right? Which agency are you with? 
I'm with United Real Estate, um, okay. which is a national uh, company. It's not in all areas, but um, but you know most most brokerages are regional. So you could um, find somebody from Remax or from Century Twenty One. Or really doesn't yeah. matter. Yep, we 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 are independent contractors. We there's not there's nothing that forces us to use someone, and and I don't have loyalty to to you know my brokerage. I have loyalty to my clients. Okay, perfect. I, I am seeing somebody asked us a question. Maybe we'll address it right now. It's do you market a house differently if it's marketed to investors? Um, yes, I, you, you do. And that's um, one of one of the, so one of the other the the questions that I would ask my a real estate agent in interviewing them is who do you think my buyer is? And I think that's important to ask a realtor because it lets you know, it, it will tell you how they're going to market it and what ideas they have to market it. And it also lets you, from your standpoint, Svetha, help people know how to stage. Absolutely. It's a very good point. So when I talk to clients, you know, I ask them if they have a realtor already. Now, that brings another point that I want to go back on. Do you think that the first approach interviewing the realtors, first of all, do you think that we should interview two or three different realtors? I believe we should. And second, at what point in the selling process should we start meeting with the realtors? Is it, I believe that it's probably better to wait after the staging, but maybe not necessarily depending on the, on the urgency of the matter. So I'd like to get your opinion on that. I I, th I don't think I think a couple of months out, if you know that you're going to move and you have a couple of months, it's not too early. Um, you don't have to commit to a realtor, but you can start talk, interview a couple of realtors. An ideal timeline, two to three months before you move, you speak with a couple of realtors, you ask your questions and then maybe you do the staging and then you bring them back to say, I think I like this one better Then have that person come back and do a CMA, which is the comparative market analysis. Very important. I was hoping that you would get to this point because A, I just want everybody to understand that um, there is no charge to you guys as a home seller for this service. So that's how realtors work. So they do a lot of prep work in the hopes of, of being the chosen one. And one of the things that you should definitely, so write it all down, one of the things that you should definitely ask for is a comparative market analysis. Can you just explain a little bit what it is? Sure. And that's that's where we pull comparable sales that have been in the last um, you know, six months, but really in this kind of market, you pull ones from even closer, the last three months, which are actual sold prices, not the list prices, not what Zillow says, but what did the house actually, what money changed hands after that house went under contract? So we pull that up and we do a comparison between houses according to how big it is, according to where the location is, according to um, floor plan and uh, you know, various, various factors to come up with what we say we think that this is the value of your home yeah so usually like basically you have to compare apples with apples right so if you have a three-bedroom home with uh, a two-car garage you know you would be pulling all of the houses in the neighborhood which would be as similar as possible which sold with the similar features is that correct Correct. Um, so that might be easy in, a, in a, a home built by a builder where there's lots of the same floor plans. It gets trickier if you're in a more established neighborhood where this one has a, had a pool put in or this one has these upgrades or they put an addition on the back. So it can be very hard to compare apples to apples in yep. more established neighborhoods. So we pull and then we just add, we have it's basically, a, you know, I have a spreadsheet of adding and subtracting. Well, you know what, this one backs to the freeway, but, you know, deeper in the neighborhood, that house sold for $75,000 more. Well, that's because it, it, it didn't back to the, didn't back to the freeway. It, it backed to a park. So yeah, you look at individual you. characteristics of homes to compare. But I, I think after being 15 for 15 years in real estate and actually, you know, selling because my husband and I, we've also flipped homes. So I also have, you know, I've sold like said probably between 10 and 15 homes. Um, 
one of the things is basically it's a guessing game at the end of the day and i think it's super important that we're we're honest and that's one of my pet peeves with realtors is that a lot of realtors are not necessarily 100 percent honest and i think they give the client the listing price that the client wants to hear not necessarily the true listing price the way it should be but at the end of the day it's it's the get it's a guesstimate right it's it's the you do the best scientific analysis you can do but after that you come up with a price that how do you end up with the final price well it, it, it's a conversation I mean, it, for for me i tend to be I, what, let me, let me tell you, I'll tell, this is an important thing I think for people to know is there is traditionally a statistic, um, that we use, which says, if you don't have an offer within the first 21 days, yeah, it, it's priced wrong. Yeah. So we it, it is, a, has a negative effect on clients if their house is listed for a, a lengthy period of time. If you could, any realtor can go in and if we say, oh, it's been on the market 45 days, do you know what I'm telling my buyer coming in there? They're probably ready to make a deal. I'm already discounting in my head that house price if I see that it's been on the market for a while. Yep. Yep. People start asking what's wrong with it. So I'm very conscientious of that going in when making the list price because even if the buyer wants or the seller wants, I, yeah, I really want $500,000 for my house. I will be doing that person a disservice if it sits on the market for a month and a half. Absolutely. I'm so here. I'm so glad you say that because I see it and I'm not a realtor. I don't give prices. I don't judge, but I just have experience. And also it affects the staging because when somebody invests, you know, a couple thousand dollars on staging, obviously we all work for the same goal. We want it to work. We want it to be fast. We want it to be good. So it really does affect the value of the house, as you're saying, if the house is overpriced. And that, like, I keep telling this to people, talk to your realtor, go talk to two or three year realtors. One time, I remember one of my first clients many years ago got, uh, got the market analysis from, I think, three or four different realtors. Well, and they were suggesting a listing price. Believe it or not, the difference was almost $100,000 on the same house. Wow. So there's something that really doesn't make sense there. So being realistic and, you know, doing your research, discussing with your clients and you giving a realistic listing price will definitely play into, into the clients. It's, it's beneficial for a client. And that's where it could be helpful to get multiple CMAs, the comparative analysis analyses because look at them a good realtor will give you a detailed one they will show you these are the houses and you need to say well yeah that's a five bedroom house mine's a three bedroom or you know that one has a large corner lot and has this gorgeous yard and my yard i haven't done any landscaping and it's very plain like being re being realistic and seeing what what houses within that they're comparing it to go through the details it's a lot of stuff they, they might be 10 pages long yeah it's worth you making sure if hey i really would like that hundred thousand dollars more for my house is that realistic ask that's a great question so to, to ask the realtor yeah you know, i had someone else do it this yeah. is a hundred thousand more how do you how, is it possible, how yeah. are you going to get me that but it's exactly what you said. I do that personally. So when we're thinking about uh, either buying a house or listing a house for a flip, I always, and Linda will get back to you on that question. I didn't forget about marketing to investors, but um, I definitely do that. So my realtor, who also became my friend and we are very loyal to each other, she sends me a very detailed market analysis. Like you said, it could be 20 pages. And not only I look at every house and every price, but I also look at all the photos. I look at all the photos to see the pictures, to see whether the kitchen is outdated or the bathrooms are outdated or uh, the house needs to be fully repainted or the floors are really awful or maybe it's full of old carpet. So I compare, that's where the staging or the stager mentality comes in because I need to see what I can do, you know, either to reduce the price on the house or if I want to like, where am I going to market my house? If it's my house is perfectly renovated and staged, obviously, you know, I can get a little bit more money. 
So, okay, so we've covered uh, some, you know, psychological determining who your clientele might be. That's another important one. Who are you going to be marking in the house to? Tell me something. Uh, one thing that I get questions a lot about is when you have, let's say, three or four bedrooms in a house, should you present them as a full, all of the bedrooms? Like the more bedrooms, the better? Or is it okay to use one of the bedrooms as an office, for example, or a TV watching room? So that's where knowing your marketing, I think, is important. I think most of the time, if, if, if bedrooms are considered having a, a, a room with a door, a window, and a closet, if it's lacking one of those things, it's not technically a bedroom. Um, that doesn't mean you don't see realtors using that and saying it's a fourth bedroom or whatever. But um, a lot of times they will market it as a fourth bedroom or bonus room. Um, right now, one of the things, the trends coming out of COVID, out of quarantine has been people are actually seeking out a home office. It's yes. seeking out a separate office office space. So I'm seeing more in the market description, I'm seeing that being described differently as fourth bedroom or large home office space. Okay. Um, knowing who you're marketing to, I think is important. If you're marketing to, if you're, if it's a young couple, a, you know, young couple that is your prime market, you're probably going to market it more as a home office space bonus room than as a fourth bedroom. Okay, so, so far we've covered uh, one of the questions to ask. Once you identified, let's say, two or three potential realtors, you meet with them, you ask them for the market analysis, you you ask them for what their experience, their success rate, like what are the other top questions that you what, ask them? One of the top questions, because if you go and you look, who's my top realtor? Most of what you're going to get are people who are paying a lot of money to be on the search engine higher. Um, they also will be agents who have a large team. Uh, many people, because it's an emotional thing, they, they go, they meet with a realtor, they love the realtor, they cannot wait, this person is going to be great. And then during the process, they have very little contact with that person they met with. One of the questions that you need to ask is, am I going, who am I going to be communicating with if I work with you? Do you work with a team? And are you going to be my only point of contact? Because if you're working with a broker, you might get the broker on the listing, the listing uh, meeting appointment that you have, but then you may, you, you may never see that person again. Correct. So some people become very disappointed yep. that that you know this woman who is lovely who knows what she's doing she's going to hand you off to her you know 22 year old assistant who just got yep. his degree. I've seen that happen many times. That's a very good point. What about asking about their track record or their experience, their marketing plan? What else? I I personally think the marketing plan is probably the most important thing aside from from that to ask for. You, what is your plan to market? Um, what are the rules about? Because we just had some major rule changes here in the U.S. about pre-marketing, about coming soon. So how, it, it, do, do we start marketing it before I'm actually ready to sell it? What, and what is your plan? If you're going to be marketing to millennials, it, it, it might not matter that you're doing a Facebook campaign because your target might, market might be on Instagram. Um, you might want them to be creating word of mouth on social media. Um, you might want, you know, you, you just want to know, are they going to do mailers? If you're at a certain price point, it makes, it matters. If you have a million dollar home coming on the market, you, you may want mailers because that's a very specific niche market. So different marketing campaigns, you talk to them about how are you going to market this? How are we going to get people in the door? Um, and and talk through what that what their proven track record is for that. How you know how quickly do you sell homes at what percentage of list price? It's a little misleading uh -huh. right now to ask that um, because it, it, in my market, for example, everything's it, it doesn't everything's selling everything's selling <laughs> and quickly and. Um, the percentage of uh, that it that it will 
sell for? So if you list it at 500,000, are you getting 500,000? What's your track record? And they should have some numbers to say what percentage of list value do the houses actually close for? Um, uh, let's see. And then the, another question, which might be important if you're, again, if you, if you are, you want a top realtor, ask them how many clients are they working with currently? If they have 17 clients that are actively buying right now, they're not, they may not be able to give you the level of service that you need to sell your house. So how, how many active listings do you have right now? And even though more might sound better, you have to think about you personally, how much the level of personal service. Okay. The other thing you also, I'm taking notes because maybe I'll summarize it all after. So also sure. one of the thing is what services do you pay for? Right. But and, and, and you can say, what, what are your fees and how does that break down? Uh -huh. I, think it's, I think it's important. Um, you know, traditionally the most standard commission is usually for a listing is 6%, three being going to the listing agent, 3%, and the other 3% of that goes to the cooperating agent, meaning the agent that brings the buyer. Yep. However, I have seen some agents who list and they take a larger, we can write it however we want, they will take a larger share. They might yep. cut down on the other, the cooperating fee which is sometimes problematic. It shouldn't make a difference, but... Can, yeah, can I just explain that? Because I think it's a Please. super important point and it's something that I've discovered as well. And I'm so glad we're, we're doing the dirty laundry of the real yeah. estate here. Because um, in Canada, a few years ago, that because that problem was discovered, I became illegal and it actually has to be disclosed on the brokerage contract so i don't know if it's the same in the us you'll tell me but it's the, the reason why and i want to explain it to people who might not understand how it works so technically speaking if your listing agent you pay them six percent commission and then they give whoever brings your buyer in three percent you know that works out okay but for example if the listing agent keeps four percent for themselves and only gives two percent to the listing agent what what might happen is some agents are going to say well i'm not going to bring the person to this house because i will only be getting two percent why would i be showing this house to this person when i can take them to five other houses and I'll push another house versus this one because I'm going to be getting more money. At the end of the day, realtors are all commissioned people and they only live off commissions. So, of course, it's a natural. It's not necessarily ethical because they're not having the best interest of a client at heart, obviously. But a lot of people would end up doing that. They would end up ignoring and kind of boycotting your house. And you wouldn't even know why. So that is super, super important. Is it something that is in uh, the brokerage contract? Is it something that has to be disclosed? It is something that is in our standard contract here in Arizona. I believe it is in most states, but it is something where it, it's right in there. This percent goes and this percent goes. But again, that contract, when you're the list, you're selling your home, that's a big, long contract. And it's got a bunch of legal, and a lot of people just, their brain, they don't really understand what's a cooperating fee, what's a whatever, just tell me how much I have to pay. And so they don't fully understand when it's in there, but it will say the total fee, and then it's split down between listing agent and cooperating agent. Um, that's a very good point. So whoever is watching this, write this down, because it is a super important question that you do understand to ask what is the, the breakdown of the total fee between the listing agent and the uh, the buyer's agent, and it should be at 3%. Um, another, that brought another question for me to you. Is there a, a, a length of a contract term that you recommend? Because it could be three months, six months, 12 months. I know right now, technically, you know, we're all hoping that the house is gonna sell within a day or two. But let's say in a regular situation, what is your what do you recommend to clients to sign for how long? I I I, I three to six months. I think six months is is enough because um, realize that when you you might sign a listing agreement a month before the house actually goes on the market, um, a realtor has a lot of work to do to get that house ready to have all the documents ready to list it. Um, they've got to go through get the specifications on your house. 
um, get everything ready so that way everything that is in the listing is 100% accurate. And sometimes that's quick, but sometimes it's not. From my end, I pull permits. I look to see is all the work that's been done on the house permitted. Um, you know, does it have, let's, let's prove that it's in a, you know, if the, if the person selling it says, well, you know, it backs to parkland and that can never be developed. I don't want to put that in a listing unless I've done my due diligence and can say, yep, no, I pulled the county records. Here they are. It shows that that parkland that it backs to will never be developed. So there's a lot of sometimes hidden legwork that we realtors do to make sure that we can verify that the details in that property are correct. So you might sign a listing agreement a few weeks before your house gets listed. It's not usually the day before it goes on the market. It's give that realtor yeah. some time to do their due diligence. So that way you are legally protected in terms of your description and what you put what you put into your description, make sure that say, hey, yep, here's the documentation. We can show that. So, and, yeah. okay, yeah. So I'll go on. Sorry. So if you had, it's, let's say about you know three weeks a month before you actually put the property on the market, you're probably in a listing agreement. And then in a regular situation, I would say you know giving it three months to sell, four months to sell. I six months gives the realtor enough time but without feeling too pressured and without creating tension between the client and the listing agent. Yeah, because what people have to realize also is that a realtor is doing car marketing expenses to be able to market your property. You know, one time, I don't know if it's the same in the US, but I suspect it would be kind of similar. Um, one of my realtor friends told me that it's anywhere between a thousand and two thousand dollars easily that it can cost them in marketing expenses when you account for the gas and you know the insurance and and visits and open houses and whatever croissants or whatever they, they do so so you do have to give them a fair chance as well uh, there is a possibility of breaking a contract if you're not satisfied a lot of people don't know about that because you can can you just comment quickly on that you can it, it's something that has to be taken up to a brokerage level so you have to um, the the agent would have to speak to the broker but if you just you generally would say look, I, I don't think this is working and I want to be released from the contract. How do I go about doing that? That usually is just a conversation with the broker. A, yeah. a good agent won't fight it. You know, they might they might say, look, I want this other chance. But if, if the communication has broken down or it's become negative, it, it's it's not good. OK, you, you, you don't need that. So it's just a conversation sometimes between you and that 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 agent's broker. Okay, let's answer Linda's question because she keeps she keeps sending yeah, me the true. question, and that is about our. Uh, I know her situation a little bit. I think her house is needs a lot of work, so she's thinking of selling it to investors. Yeah. But uh, so her question was, how do you market a house? Do you really need a real estate agent if you want to sell to investors? And the other issue that she has that she seems to be getting a very uh, wide price range of between $150,000. So for example, you know, if she, she asks two or three or four different realtors, they can give her like between 300,000 and 450,000 uh, range, which is enormous. So just, just quickly, if you can address and tell me like sure. what, what needs, what, what advice would you give her? Well, generally there, there's, there, I, I think you can look for, an agent who is, has experienced investors. I think that's more, look, more getting an agent who knows how to market to investors. There are generally um, pockets of real estate agents who have investors that they are constantly looking for. So you have here, I could probably name about 10 people who, ha who have a good you know, two dozen people from all over the country who are looking for investment properties in that area. And so having conversations with them um, are important as well as um, talking with some of the teams. Um, there are quite a few teams here that do flip. So what, it, what is a real estate team that will come in and they will purchase the home and they do all the upgrades and then they resell at top dollar. So well, knowing, you're touching on something I'm sorry. But you're touching on something different. So the question also is that should do you even need a real estate agent if you market to investors? The, the study, the studies show. It, the reality is, I always say you wouldn't want to walk into a courtroom without an attorney. You, you, 
risk a lot trying yeah. to sell, particularly to investors who will absolutely lowball you. If you get a card, I, we get cards in the mail saying, hey, you know what, we'd love to buy your property. They will not give you the same price. You will not get the same price as you would with a realtor. And study after study after study shows that the 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 agents more than pay their for their six yeah. percent uh charge because they're able to sell closer and for more money okay i'm going to put you in touch uh in touch with linda specifically because she obviously yeah. has a lot of questions and uh yeah. she is i forgot in which area linda where where are you in the u.s i forget where she lives but you can uh, address her specific questions before yeah. we go i also want to talk uh quickly obviously you know i think one of the questions that people should be asking their realtor is obviously about home staging right and uh tell me how how the fact that you were willing to spend money purchase my course you went through my course uh, what do you think of it and how does it tie in to your services and what do you recommend to other people to do in terms of home staging? Well, I, I love your course because I, I think um, one of the conversations that I have, it, well, my role, I believe, is to educate my clients. I'm the professional. I know about real estate and people have that emotional attachment. I love my home and these are my grandma's things and look at how and this is where my this is the couch where my daughter lost her tooth or whatever. You have these emotional attachments to it. And my job is to educate and say, look, this is wonderful. But the person walking in the door is going to sense that this is grandma's and your daughter's and 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 they're going to be turned off by it. So my my job is to say, look, I want to help you get top dollar. What are you willing to do to do this? Do you have a budget? Can we spend a couple of thousand dollars to repaint and change the light fixtures. What what if I, I feel like I can more than get your money out of that and have it be a quicker turnaround if you take that thing which screams 1985. If we just remove that one item, we're gonna get you more money. And that's a difficult that it, it sometimes is a difficult conversation, but um but you know, to have resources so that my clients can go and understand and learn, okay, this is what I can do over the next month, two months yes. to get top dollar for my house. Because um, I think we've kind of talked about it a little bit before. What I found in my experience is that, you know, I, I worked with a lot of realtors and a lot of good experienced realtors, most of the things they know, it's not like they don't know that somebody's house smells of uh, cat urine, you know? or that it's super cluttered or that the paint the colors are very outdated the thing is it almost becomes a conflict of interest and it can create tension and disagreements and bad blood between when they the realtor tells a client the things that they don't want to hear so that's why a lot of realtors prefer having somebody like me dealing with them right correct because i also don't want to be the one that says you know what paint that blue and then when it doesn't sell in six weeks, they're like, it was the blue. It went, I, I, you know what? I don't want to do that. And, and, and I'm, and I'm not, an, I'm not a design expert. I know a lot. I know what, when it looks good, I know how to market the house. I would rather have them work. You're, you're the expert, you know, how to do these things and how to individualize it so that, yeah, it helps. So, so when you work, when you take listings, is um home staging or some sort of home staging part of your services or your uh, in terms yes. of what you push your clients towards yes. and i do understand that some clients might be completely close to it but in general is it something that you systematically recommend yes. and do you think that if nothing else whether it's one-on-one -on -one consultation with me or my self-paced course if people have more time would that something that would be of interest to your clients? Yes, one hundred percent of the time, I recommend it. I don't even care if it's vacant. Okay, yeah, for vacant, I can help them select the furniture. I have yep. to look for that as well, or it could be a local company as well where they can go. But basically, the important thing that the message that I want people to have is that you, as a realtor obviously you know believe that staging is a super important part of the selling process and because somebody would stage it would allow you to do your job better and get them more money right 
And because what just as we talked about how emotions can work against the home seller, they work for us on the home buyer. We want Absolutely. somebody to walk in and imagine themselves living there. Absolutely. Because that 10 to 20 seconds in, they they have this, it's much harder if, if they have that factor of, oh my gosh, I see myself here. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. The, the rest of the walkthrough of the house is them trying to talk themselves out of it. Yeah. As a matter of fact, the last survey that was done by the National Association of Realtors, uh, which was in 2019, but they are, it's pretty much the same every year. They interview like 2,500 um, uh, realtors in the U.S. And the conclusion is always the same. And it's estimated that buyers are willing to pay up to 10 and sometimes even 15% more for a well-staged, well-maintained, well-presented yep. house because their emotion, like you said, their emotional connection is there. And basically people are looking for a turnkey solution. Is that correct? 100 percent it is where it is worth it just in terms of 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 not only the price point but time saved because you will get people who come in and immediately want that house yes okay so i see we're getting a lot of questions for you so linda is in minneapolis okay I think you could help all right if she's yes, looking absolutely. for a particular situation i'm happy to, to communicate to, with anyone here on the Okay, guys, so I'm going to have to go. I think we had so many interests. This is amazing. Like, I honestly, I did not expect so, much, so many people. We have uh, oh, 15 people that are live, which is amazing. And a lot of people are going to be watching the replay. So if you're watching the replay, put uh, hashtag replay in the comments. If you have questions for Jenny, you can type them in. Jenny, just tag her. She is in our group. You see her name, Jenny Ullman. And if you do want to get in touch with her, you can get in touch with yes. her through the group. You can tell me and I'll put the two of you in touch by messenger. And this way, uh, with your permission, I think we already have a couple of people who are interested. So we have yep. Linda and probably Sherry. I think you yeah. can certainly help Sherry in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Yeah, I, I, I would love to talk to you, Sherry, because I think I, I want to hear what happened, the experiences that happened. And yeah, I, yeah, I, I think we gave her some that. advice where she ended up up overspending money on certain yeah. things that she didn't need to do and then when she came to me um you know it was kind of too late and basically sherry is in a situation where she doesn't need to sell her house and yeah. the money is tight and it has to be sold okay. quickly and for the for the best the best possible yes. um amount right. so diana says thank you sveta and jenny you're welcome diana and diana is i think canadian and from out I'm west so we'll be talking to her soon as well um, so thank you very much for your time, Jenny. Really, really appreciate it. Oh, and thank you. Keep watching the thread. You guys, if you want to ask Jenny something, don't forget to tag her in the comments so she's going to see your comments. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.